All right. So what I wanted to talk about today was going through uh, AI large language models, uh, specifically chat GPT and using the API for it. Uh, potentially a lot of very powerful things that kind of around the edges of crypto econ can help us accelerate our work. And just like for like anyone in the PL network, there are, I think are a lot of opportunities. So um, get the zoom, I got some zoom controls that I need to get out of the way. Okay. So chat GPT, a lot of people have heard about, you go here and you, you talk with this, uh, this chat bot, uh, you go to chat.openai.com. Okay. They got high demand. Let's see if we can get through. You can have this conversation with it and ask it all kinds of stuff. Uh, so I, because of this demand stuff, created uh, an account and you can go in. Okay. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me do this as it's responding. So if you're making, say, say you're making a blog post and you want to just like brainstorm some ideas. So give me uh, the top most compelling points to sell decentralized storage on Filecoin, right? Like if you're generating content, if you have done uh, an analysis, you can say, help me to summarize this. What are the top three points that I should make from my analysis and put at the top in the summary? It, it's not going to be 100% accurate, but it gives you a head start and probably saves you a lot of time while you're drafting things. And so like if we're creating a blog uh, article, we can just like copy and paste this and use that as our like boilerplate, like starting point. So that's a, a one way to use this. Another way to do this is like if you want to, and let me just jump out of this chat interface and into uh, the actual portal. And so I've been messing around with this and I've spent 12 cents <laughs> using the API calls and, and doing this stuff. It's it's pretty cheap at low volumes. Um, but if you go to the playground, you have a more kind of like direct line into it. You don't have to, the chat GPT user interface doesn't get buffered and you can kind of like cut through that noise if you have the account. And so if you want to do something like... Uh, you're in this playground, you're using the, the text Da Vinci model that powers GPT-3. And you might say, uh, you know, Python function that uh, creates a matrix of N by M and populates it with uh, pi or something. And you just like hit submit and it just like writes code for you. Um, all right, so demo, live demos never work, do they? <laughs> Where is it? So the, oh, current, oh, it's overloaded on the inside too. Man, that's a bummer. see if this works so like yeah if you're like stuck on like you you can go to stack overflow and like find code chunks you know like that that's easy to do but but if you just want to like describe what you want and, and like get some code that will write things out for you um yeah it can do it in solidity you can you can write you know smart contracts get just get it uh get yourself accelerated and move forward so that's really neat. Uh, I'll also just say for, you know, like logo stuff, if you're doing like marketing design, you can upload, like I've uploaded our carrot logo here and said, generate me some other ones that are similar to it. You could like, uh, this is Dolly. So it's a different model than the language model, but you can go into open AI and use these tools uh, to, uh, you know, make like say, Hey, I want this, this carrot, to be blasting off like a rocket and turn it 180 degrees, um, right? So like, this is interesting stuff. 
Now, the thing that like when I was messing around with this that like really stuck out to me is uh, a former colleague of mine posted uh, this article. One of the shortfalls uh, of OpenAI and ChatGPT is that it doesn't cite its sources, right? And so like, can you believe and depend on this stuff? Well, a way to kind of hotwire that is to implement Q&A against your own documentation. And this is this is would be called prompt engineering. And so uh, what you do is you you first you run a text search uh, against your documentation. So so I was thinking, okay, the the Filecoin spec or like specific documentation about Filecoin. Can an FVM developer, a hackathon developer, go in uh, and and know that they're they're asking about a specific set of documents? to know better how to, to code in Filecoin. So all the FVM documentation, all the Filecoin specs, you, you can put that into an app, uh, search that with like kind of uh, traditional search technology, get all of the snippets of code, all the snippets of documentation that contain a certain keyword or a certain idea, paste them together, and then construct a prompt uh, to, to open AI, hit, hit it through the API and say, given the above content you just give it that blob, blob of text you put that into so, so you're like force feeding uh you know hey open ai chat gpt answer a question based only on this context and then it gives you the answer based on that and so i coded up that they have a uh python notebook here which which is an example of that but i coded it up with the filecoin spec uh in a, in a pretty crude way. So if you go through and you use a, this web scraping library called Beautiful Soup, you can point it to the Filecoin spec, pull in the text, and then you say, hey, get the text out. You don't want to include the uh, table of contents. So let's just look after the 12,000th character. There's, there's almost a million letters or characters in the Filecoin spec online. So let's search through that. Let's divide it up into 200 character chunks. This is a real, there's much better ways to, to do this. Like you can divide it by paragraph or by P tag or H1, H2 tags and do this a lot more smart, smartly. But I just kind of, just to get a prototype done. Uh, then you say, here you have a variable that's the query. So this is what you'd be getting from somebody. Uh, and maybe somebody's asking, is initial pledge higher than or lower than pre-commit deposit? Uh, so you could use some search to pull out all the all the texts in the spec that have anything to do with initial pledge. You just put that into a blob of text here. And then you you just like feed that into open open AI uh, chat GPT. And so you say, this is the prompt. You say, answer the question as truthfully as possible using the provided text. If the answer is not contained within the text below, say, I don't know. And finally, provide your answer. This is another thing that's just a cherry on the top. Provide your answer translated into Spanish and Chinese Mandarin. And so like you could you could have developers all over the world asking in their own language uh, over the Filecoin spec, and it answers them in their own language. Uh, and so here's that context. Again, this is all just being fed into OpenAI, into the, the um, question answering prompt. And then the question, is initial pledge higher than or lower than pre-commit deposit? Uh, here's the API call. You have to have your API key in an environment variable. You can put it into the notebook as well. Uh, but then it comes back and says, initial pledge is usually higher than pre-commit deposit. Spanish, el deposito, inicial, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Chinese Mandarin, and th there it is. So it answers the question in all three languages. Um, so just think it would be interesting uh, to try this out and have a web page, uh, uh, you know, hosted for the hackathons that we're having all over the world, where people can like ask que ask specific questions into the documentation. It's stuff like this that these these are now new tools available to us that I think we should be thinking about. Um, so that's all I got. Uh, let's see. That's that's pretty awesome. Thanks. I mean, it's, I mean, like I yeah. Did. As a really as a cool. follow up, 
to this. Uh, so I use uh, GitHub Copilot. Um, yeah. And I think it's based off of chat GPT and it, it's absolutely incredible. So uh, as, as someone who has like worked on large language models, I I'm still skeptical, but the capabilities of copilot are, are amazing and it, and it enhances productivity. So I would recommend it. Nice. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to have your wits about you. Like it can accelerate you in a completely wrong direction, but then you test it and be like, okay, you know, say it's 20 minutes, not having to look that up or, you know. How about, how about math? Like it, it can do some, like a little bit of coding and thing like, can it think about kind of symbolic math questions? Not well, that's one of that, that in fact is I think one of the biggest like uh, weak points of these language models. It's all statistical, like these words occur in relation to each other. And it's like maps through that. It won't like necessarily abstract away from that and say like, oh, you know, do, do the math. And to input documents, uh, you need to do this, uh, this beautiful source library. You cannot like ask it to directly read a, a PDF or something, right? So that that's all like front end and back end data wrangling and engineering. Like there's there's tons of ways to do that. I'm not very good at that, but there you know data engineers and front end engineers and people uh, have tons of ways to to you know you can take a bunch of PDFs and put them into Elasticsearch and have that hosted through an API. And uh, there's a library called Deep Set Haystack that does that. There's there's a bunch of them, um, but that's kind of blocking and tackling uh, sort sort of work outside of the machine learning stuff. Cool.